Hey Year 8, welcome to your very first video tutorial on algebra. This is your heading, you need to write it into your book. Anything that's on these slides, you also need to write in just like you would if it was on the board. So, what is algebra? Well, we refer to an algebraic expression as anything that consists of numbers and pronumerals. Oh, hold on. What? What's a pronumeral? Well, X and Y are pronumerals. What that fancy new word pronumeral means is it just means a letter that stands for a number that we don't know. So, for example, this thing that I've written here, X plus Y plus 3, is an algebraic expression because it's got some pronumerals and it's got some numbers. Okay? There's some important things we need to remember when we write algebraic expressions. So normally when you wrote something just with numbers like 1 times 2, this is how you wrote it, or 2 times 4, that's how we write it. With algebraic expressions, okay, we don't write the multiplication symbol. So if I wanted to write A times B, I just write it as AB. Again with division, this is another big thing. You know that I've been trying to get you guys to do this all year so this bit won't be as hard. We don't write the division symbol anymore. We always write it as a fraction, okay? Because what we know this fraction sign isn't just limited to fractions. Actually what that means is division. So the big lessons from this little slide have been write multiplication like this and division like this. These funny num letters in our algebraic expression are called pronumerals and they stand for something we don't know. And what we're going to learn about and what algebra is, is it consists of numbers and pronumerals. Within algebraic expressions, you do need to have an understanding of a few different things. One of those includes the concept of what a term is. So within algebraic expressions, you can have a number of terms. For example, 5 is a term, x is a term, 9a is a term. Now isn't that interesting? That says 9a. Who can remember what operation is going on between the 9 and the a if I haven't been given something? Oh, of course, multiplication, okay? A, B, C is a term, 43, X, Y, Z. They're all just different types of terms. A coefficient is the number in front of the pronumeral. For example, the coefficient of Y in this little thing here that says 8X plus 2Y plus Z is 2. Because if you look at Y, it has a 2 in front of it. That's Y's coefficient. If there is no number in front of it, then the coefficient is 1. So if you see something like 2 plus z and you're asked to find the coefficient of z, the coefficient is 1 because there's no number in front of that z. But I know that if there's no number, it means 1. I know that that was a lot of information to process and I hope that you've written it all down. Now we're going to put some of that information into practice. So, the first question asks us to list the individual terms in the expression 3a plus b plus 13c. Now, when I look at this, I can see three different terms. Now, how do I distinguish what a term is? Well, different terms in algebraic expressions are separated by operators. My operators are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And I say 3a plus b plus 13c. So there is three terms in this algebraic expression. Those terms are 3a, b, and 13c. Okay, so terms are separated in algebraic expressions by operators. Next example. 
says state the coefficient of each pronumeral in the expression 3a plus b plus 13c. Now I know the coefficient is the number that comes before the pronumeral. So the coefficient, coefficient, oh, oh sorry, I, I started writing something in my head there. The coefficient of a equals 3 because that's the number that's in front of my first term. The coefficient of b, oh, there's not a number there in front of that one. Who can remember what that means? Oh, yeah, I remember. I wrote it down. If there's not a number in front of it, it means 1 times that. So 1's going to be my coefficient of b. And then my coefficient of c is going to be equal to 13 because that's the number that's in front of c. Okay, so that's naming terms and understanding and finding the coefficient. Let's have a look what else we can do. So now this time, the question's asking us to write our very own expression for the following. Now I've been given one, two, three, four, five different examples of worded problems and it wants me to write an expression for it. It said the first one. Let's have a look at the first one. The first one says 5 more than K. The first thing I have to do with these questions is work out what operation are they wanting me to perform. Now that word more is more than gives it away for me. What does more than mean? What operator could more than be referring to? 5 more than K. Mm. Well, it's not subtraction. I, I can't be division. 5 more than k? It's not 5 times k. Okay, so it must be k plus 5. That's 5 more than whatever k is. Okay, yep, I get that. Let's try the next one. 3 less than m. 3 less than m. It's not m less than 3, but 3 less than m. So whatever m is, I subtract 3 to get the answer. That's how I write an expression for 3 less than m. Let's try it for c as well. Now you should be writing all of these expressions down, guys, as I do it. The sum of a plus b. Ooh, what operation now? That word sum gives it away. The sum of something. When I find the sum of something, what am I doing? Oh, of course, I'm adding two things together. So the sum of a and b would be a plus b. Cool. That's all right. Let's try the next one. Let's try the next one. Double the value of x. Hmm... Double the value of x. If I double something, what do I do? I times it by 2, don't I? Okay, so that's kind of like saying x. Ooh, quick tip. From now on, if you're writing x down in your book in algebra, I need you to write it like this, like a backward Chanel symbol, okay? So one way going that way, one way going that way. Then we'll be able to distinguish the difference between x and and multiplication symbols. Okay, so you need to write your x's down like that. Now it's saying double the value of x, so that's x times 2. Oh, but wait, no, no, no. I wrote something down, didn't I? I said I didn't write multiplication like this. How did I write it? Oh, I just wrote the numbers next to each other, didn't I? Okay, so instead of writing x times 2, I actually just write it as 2x, double the value of x. Okay, I think I can remember that. The product of c and d, what does that word product mean? What does that word product mean? Mm, okay, that's going to be my giveaway. If you ever see this word product, you need to remember that the word product means multiplication. Okay, so if it's saying the product of c and d, that means C multiplied by D. So I, do I write C multiplied by D? Or do I remember something in the last example that told me it's not, I don't use that multiplication symbol. I simply write them next to each other. 
So my answer would be C, D. <laughs> C, D. <laughs> That's a funny answer. Okay. Ooh, now we're getting a little bit more tricky. We've leveled up a little bit. It says P is halved and then 4 is added. How do I halve P? Okay, we read it from left to right. Okay, now P is halved and then 4 is added. P is halved and then 4 is added. How do I halve P? What operation do I use if I halve something? Oh, yeah, I divide it by 2. So P divided by 2. And then what do we want me to do? Oh, and then I add 4. And then so 4 is added. Okay. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's okay. That's A. Make sure you write these down, guys. Let's have a look at B. The sum of X and Y is taken, and then it's divided by 7. Okay, that word sum, I've remembered that sum means add. So the sum of x and y, x plus y, remembering to draw my x's right, is taken. So that's done, okay. And then I divide by 7. So then I go, okay, that's sum divided by 7. Okay, that's all right. I, I can do that. I think the next one is really tricky. The next one is really, really tricky. And I'm going to leave it, okay? Number C, I'm going to leave it and I'm going to see who in the class can come up with the answer by the end of the lesson. This is the question. The sum of X and one-seventh of Y. Of Y. The sum of X and one-seventh of Y. Mm. You guys have a think of that. So, let's have a look at this next one. It says the 5 is subtracted from K. Okay. 5 is subtracted from K. And the result is tripled. Now, how do I triple something? If I'm tripling that, I'm timesing it by 3, aren't I? But it's the result of this. It has to be all of that times 3. Now, what device do I have that groups things together? Let's think all the way back to our orders of operations. What device have we seen that groups things together? Oh, I don't know, brackets. If I put brackets around that and then write times three, that would mean everything inside the brackets times three. But wait, now I've got a problem. I remember from those few slides that I'm not meant to use this multiplication symbol. So, I'm going to show you a way that you can times a bracket by 3 without using that. If you simply put the number that you want to multiply everything in the bracket right next to it, that means that everything inside the brackets will be multiplied by 3. I know it's been a big lesson, guys. I know there was a lot of information to go through there, but hopefully that's enough to get you started.